Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got an update for you for the treadmill because I knew it was gonna be something kinda of simple and I figured let's just go ahead and check it out. I wanted to also share with my staff here at Phoebe Medical, show them exactly what's going on with this. The treadmill I actually was first going to bring in and um, allow my, my interns and the Biomed ones to troubleshoot it, but um, it didn't quite work out that way. It was just way more convenient for me not to haul it around the state like that. So I just did the troubleshooting at home in a live video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Um, I just did it yesterday, so it's a fresh release. But I went one step further and I wanted to check out the power supply itself. So this board right here, I can purchase for $175 online. Um, it's it's kind of rare, not too many people have them. And I thought there's no way this board is not that complex. You can see there's no way other than this guy in here, which I did desolder today. There's nothing in there that's too complex for me to really figure out. So I went ahead and checked it out. Now, the symptoms that I had are, I could hear the SCRs running and these here are the SCRs. These are actually the powerhouse that chop up the pulse width modulation for the motor. So it is a two pole DC motor and it runs off some high voltage. I measured at the voltage terminals for the motor right here at, at these two motor terminals and I got zero volts. Well, I found out why. It's, it was a very good reason. So the SCRs were running, which tells me that the brain box in here was technically doing its job. It also tells me that the control signal over here, when I hit start, the computer that is up in the console, it was also working because I could hear the SCRs click. So now, what could possibly be the problem? Well, the first thing that I did is uh, I desoldered the brain box right here and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't discolored up inside because it is filled with epoxy. So um, I desoldered it, checked it out, and then I resoldered it. All right, that one seems to be working fine. Now this over here, this is another power circuit um, and I can show you, here, let me just pull that component out. So over here, you can see that I have my 12 volt uh, AC that comes off the transformer, it comes in. And from there, you can see I've got four diodes. So it creates another little power phase. So it's 12 volts AC in, they go across four diodes, and now you got DC. Here is your large capacitor for that DC rail. And then it uses that DC and it comes out on this port to wherever. Doesn't really matter. So this is basically a whole nother circuit and it does tie into this a little bit. Um, it might power the brain box in here. Not really sure. Doesn't really matter at this point because since this is clicking the SCRs on right here, I knew that it was working. So after I desoldered that, I did a physical inspection. It looked like it was fine. I soldered it back in. Now I removed the two SCRs and my rectifying diode right here. So uh, I pulled them all out. I checked these guys out. They had exactly the same uh, readings. So I knew that those guys were absolutely fine. No shorted pins. Um, so that's how you test um, semiconductors is you test for a short and um, they tested fine. There was a voltage drop across them. I knew that those were working, which led me to this little guy. And uh, in case you guys want to look up the data sheet on this guy, it is uh, F is in Foxtrot 10, U is in uniform, 60, D is in dog, N is in neutral. Okay, so that's this little guy. And when you pull up his data sheet, you'll actually see that it's two diodes. They're basically facing each other like this. Now, uh, there's a few reasons why that guy is located right here. You see that this is one of my terminals, which is powered by these SCRs. And then this is the negative terminal over here for the motor. So negative, positive. The positive is pulsed with these two guys right here. And this guy here, it's a rectifying diode, but I also think it's a shunt diode because when you shut off the motor, the energy has to go somewhere, right? And you don't want that coming back through your semiconductors. So what it does is it shorts the ground right here, uh, which is technically the negative, but actually I have that the inverse 
So this is your negative rail through the SCRs and it's positive on the capacitor right there. So you can see it says M positive. Either way, it still acts as a shunting diode. So what was happening is I could hear the SCRs buzzing. So that tells me that they're running absolutely fine. But one leg of this guy, two, two of the legs were actually showing a voltage drop. The other one was showing that it was shorted. And let me go ahead and show you guys that right here on my desk with a multimeter. So it's not just theory. I can show you exactly how the failure happened. So here we go. Here's my meter. Let me go ahead and flip my leads around so that you guys can see the meter. Now, right now, I'm in continuity mode. There you go. So right now, I'm in continuity mode. So let's go ahead and touch the first leg and the middle. You can see I've got nothing. Let's switch it around. I've got nothing. Now let's try these two. Dead short. Reverse. Dead short. Okay. So there's something going on there. Now to test the voltage drop on this guy, right? So what I'm going to do is go to the first two because it showed um, it showed that it was open or not continuous. So now you go to diode mode. In one direction, it should be zero. And in the other direction, you get your voltage drop. You see that? So that's why we use continuity and we use the uh, diode mode. So now let's go to this side. See how we got zero volts, dead short. Inverse, dead short. So because these are two identical diodes facing each other, one of them is shorted, the other one's functional, which is why I had voltage at the terminals, but at the same time, um, it was shorted. So I had voltage, that's why I got the Arky Spark in the video, but one leg was shorted. And what I imagine is that this power supply here probably has a short detection and it's probably uh, limiting these SCRs. As soon as that short was detected, it's probably by the brain box. It would have to have some sort of short detection because uh, otherwise these guys here would just go up in flames. But guys, there you have it. So this is a $175 board and it's barely in stock anywhere. But this guy is less than $2 and you can find it at multiple sources. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy this guy. I'm gonna solder it in and we're gonna test it out. Should be good to go. And that's why it always benefits you to learn electronics. Because yes, I could have just changed out the board and if this was the customer's unit, I probably would have changed out the board, but because this guy here is shorted, I will probably just change this out, test it out, and that treadmill that I got for free, I'm probably going to flip it, turn around, and sell it for like a thousand dollars. Dead serious. So, a little couple dollar part, thousand dollar treadmill. Uh, original retail for that treadmill, I think, was thirty five hundred to four thousand. So that means that I'm probably going to sell it really quickly at about a thousand dollars get the profit, probably put that money back into this channel or something like that. But uh, there you go. It benefits you to learn electronics and this little diode is the problem. Thanks for watching guys.